Here we go. Wow. It is a, a jam-packed edition of uh, Full Quarter Press. Of course, we have Last Dance, the docuseries on ESPN from Netflix going on right now about Michael Jordan's 97-98 season. Uh, Phil Jackson called it the Last Dance. Of course, we celebrated some time with Michael Jordan with the Washington Wizards, and we are with Jahidi White and Chris Whitney, who were playing with the Wizards when Michael Jordan was playing with the Wizards. We're going to talk about that and and so much more on this edition of Full Court Press. Of course, my partner, Glenn Consor, is along as well. First of all, just terrific to see both you, Jahidi, and, and, and you, Chris Whitney. And we'll start with you, Jahidi. Uh, you're, in, you're in Bradley Beals town, or I guess maybe we should call it Bradley Beals in Jahidi White's town in St. Louis. But what, what's going on with Jahidi White? Well, right now, we all hunkered down, you know. Every, the world's on pause, and we're on pause. But, uh, you know, I'm working with my kids right now, doing a lot of basketball stuff with, on the hoop outside and in the basement. You know, we're doing a lot of practice on Zoom. And uh, just, just you know, I, we, I, I was coaching high school basketball, and that kind of ended abruptly. We, would, we, had a good, we were doing it, doing good, had a good season. So, I mean, the, the world's on pause, and, you know, I finally get some quality time, quality time in. Chris, what is it? You said your second retirement you're in? Yeah, just my second retirement. <laughs> Um, uh, once leaving, um, the Charlotte Hornets, um, you know, I just been able to get back and be with my kids and relax and see them go to every game and go to practice. I actually helped out a little bit at my son's high school, um, and while he was playing and he's, he's going to sign with St. Louis community college and play basketball there. Um, he had several, uh, acad academia, uh, offers for uh, to go to school but he wanted to continue to play and i say hey, son that's no problem with that i'm a juco guy myself and um so i'm just enjoying this 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 time with them um tough time but for everyone now i i'm not gonna discredit that but it's a tough time for everyone and just enjoying life right now uh, hey guys i'll, I'll ask I'll, I'll hit jihadi with this one you know, during this time of, you know, first of all, let, let me, before I, uh, it's great to see you guys. Um, and in my day, I'm a lot older than you guys, Zoom was a song by the Commodores. Okay? <laughs> now it's a whole different concept that we're, we're playing with Zoom. But anyway, right. I'll start with you, Jahidi. Um, it's a great song too, by the way. Uh, Jahidi, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, you, you mentioned um, being in, staying in, and, uh, hunkering down. What have you learned about um, you and your family during this period of time? I learned that you have to have patience and a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of patience right now. Um, and you got to have a lot of board games, but you also have to just really be into your kids and, and, and you get a lot of time to learn your kids. You know, um, <clears throat> But you just, you have to have a lot of patience, you know, uh, uh, and you have to be able to learn how to do things without, without, you know, actually going and leaving the house. I have to learn how to do Instacart now, and I have to learn how to download a DoorDash, and, you know, <laughs> and, and you get a lot of home projects done. A lot of home projects done. Chris, what have you learned? Oh man! Uh, again, I think my oldest he's seventeen, and he had gone to his friend's house, and I told him, "Stay right over there. Do not come over here." And um, Chris, um, he's my fifteen-year-old. We learned to when we go, got, we had to go out, go shopping. We go late at night, ten o'clock at night. And he is like, Daddy, make sure you get your gloves and get the extra pair of gloves because we got to change them when we get out. And I'm like, okay, I, oh, I'm with you, man. <laughs> so we go out, and there's only two or three people in the store, and we get our food. And but what I, <clears throat> because of everyone grabbing everything, I found myself getting like vegan food, <laughs> you know, those type of things. And he started to like it, so I was like, "All right, man, let's try this, man. It might, it might be our new little diet. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll get get healthier from it." And we'll yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Come out of this, and, and you know, part of this, while we look for better days ahead, 
you know, we're, we're loving going over whatever memory of certain things we have. Mm -hmm. We've done this with the Wizards of recent memories. I'm sure you guys are thinking about games, but that's why I think, you know, Last Dance has resonated so much with us because it, because it takes us back in time and it, it goes back to the, uh, uh, the the Bulls, you know, great run there. And, and I'll start this with, uh, with Jahadi and, and, and go to Chris. Just he was – Michael Jordan came back to play in 2001 for the Washington Wizards. And I think people need to remember the context of it. 9-11 uh, had just happened in this country in, in September. And our first game back – was against the Knicks in New York. And uh, that just added for me to what an emotional time that was in so many ways because, um, you know, Michael Jordan was certainly a player you look to for, for joy and, and, and light. And we were at a time in our country when we were looking for joy and light like we are now. And Jahadi, we'll start with you. What do you remember uh, as we, we had Jordan coming from the front office to the court? Well, I remember that was my contract year. I, I played two years before then, and then I, that was my contract year. So, you know, he was kind of a guy to help me go, help me. I really was going against, going with negotiating my contract, you know, and just so happened we had the, had the same uh, agent. So it kind of helped me out a lot there. Um, other than that, what I did, I did really, it, 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 you know, you grow up seeing Michael Jordan, you grow up watching him as this, above human phenomenon, you know, a big, a big fan. And in the first time, you know, he comes in the locker room and you're just in awe and stardom and you can't believe that he's just there and you, you happen to, you know, be able to not only have a chance to possibly play, play with him, but he's there, you know, helping construct and run the team a little bit. And it was just an amazing thing. I, I pitched myself many times during that first year. Chris? I, I got to ask you, Chris. Um, uh -huh. You know, correct me. First of all, I know you played with Arenas. And correct me if yeah. you played with Strickland, too, right? Yes. You played with Rod Strickland. Okay, so you play with these – you play with those two guys, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, Jordan walks in with the Wizards uniform, and you've been there for a while. Um, you got to be going. What was, the, what was the impact to you as a guard, you know, to be able to play with all those guys and then Jordan? Right. Um, well, it was. I was kind of in between both of those because Gilbert came after MJ. I came back okay. and I played right. with um, right. play with Gilbert. Right. But um, again, to piggyback off what Jihadi said, it's just you grow up watching this guy. Going outside, I don't care if he's six foot nine, six ten, like Jahadi. You go out and try to do what he did, or you're a six foot guard. You go out and try and do what MJ did. So to come back and see, you know, him in there, and our lockers was next, right next to each other, you know, and it was it was it was surreal. It was an honor, <clears throat> um, but to play with all three of those guys. It was amazing. The, the, all three are great players. Um, I would say MJ is the GOAT. As much as I love watching LeBron play, MJ is the GOAT. <laughs> um, but it, it, he was just – I'm out of that one. Something. Like, whenever – whenever. <laughs> 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 hey, look, it was, it was just like when he walked in the room, it seemed like the lights got brighter. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like the lights just got brighter when he walked in the room. And um, it was, again, it, it was amazing, though, to see the work ethic, um, to see the, 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 the drive. You know, he would get on the bus and he would say, hey, man, I remember this, Heidi. Because, Jahadi, you sat. I sat right in front of You sat in front of MJ. I sat right in I front sat, of him. And sat I sat across right from him. And Popeye Popeye sat behind me. Right, yeah. And we would always have these talks. And MJ would be like, hey, I'm telling you, we get to the playoffs, anything can happen. And he would say stuff like, watch, I'm going to turn it to something else. And I was like, what? I... And um, he, he had one said, bad. Yeah, he also said, y'all not going to like me when play if we get to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm a yeah. different person when we get to the playoffs. I'm a different... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
Well, and, and along that, let's, let's talk about this because uh, that was a real possibility in that first season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys, yeah. I, I always remembered, I, look, I honestly looked up the date, but I remember the opponent and who we were going against, the Sacramento Kings. It was February 7th, and it was right before the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. And the Wizards won their fifth straight game to go 26-21 and 21 at the All-Star break. Uh, and the, the energy in that building, and you're thinking, wow, you've hit the All-Star break five games above 500. I mean, you guys just go ahead and jump in. Uh, yeah. That period of time that you go from, all right, Michael Jordan's coming back playing, to now the, the team is rocking. Yeah, well, we, we, it was a good time. It was a good yeah, time. Well, I, I also, I remember, um, <clears throat> I don't know where I got it, but it was supposedly before MJ came back, we had one game on television. And then if he came back, <laughs> we had, what, 50? <laughs> we won TV every game. You know, I'm talking national. You know, uh it was just, it was just, it was just crazy. I was like, man, this guy got this much power that if he comes back, he's going to be on TV every game, the Wizards? Yeah. Wow. And, and then, then to be. Johnny, go ahead and jump in. Well, I remember just, you know, it took us a while to learn MJ. What we had to realize mm -hmm. is we're going to have to learn how he plays. Because mm -hmm. if you saw the last dance, you saw how, the plays went with Doug Collins coaching. You know, it was definitely everything going through MJ. So you really had to learn and study him. And I didn't even realize that we were going to be able to be in the playoff run possibly until Doug kept saying, okay, guys, we're only so-and-so over under 500 or so-and-so. I said, oh, we have a chance. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I saw, <laughs> and I saw, just the fuel and the energy of the team just changed. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I saw everybody's role becoming just solid. No one started going outside of their role. No one started, uh, you know, went over their role. You know, and once you learn to play with MJ, you have to learn him. You just study him. You know, you know, you know exactly what to do when he played. I remember Chris became like one of the most efficient shooters at that time because we needed a shooter, you know. He was like the what the Paxton pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I, I got to ask you, and, and I'd like to get J J Heidi's input on this too. You know, Jordan comes back, he, he's not 23 years old. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you guys know him, but you also don't know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. When he came back, what were, you, <clears throat> what were your thoughts? I mean, what, what, what were your impressions of him as, from an X and O standpoint, from his athletic ability, from his knowledge of the game? I mean, what were you thinking when he came back and what was reality when he came back? Well, I, I think um, X's nose, it, it, it came easily to see that he was probably the smartest player I've ever been around. And I always said, I'm a real cerebral player. But this guy right here, he knew everybody's tendencies. And I'm talking after being gone for a few years. He knew everybody's tendencies, what he can do, what he can't do. And, um, <clears throat> you know, of course, he had to get in shape. And I think that's when uh, I think he broke a rib or something. So that, that hindered his um, conditioning. But once you saw him get in shape, it was like, whoa. Now, he can't jump and fly like he did, but he would, he would get up there and dunk it. I mean, he can still dunk right now. I've seen him do it a year ago, you know, what have you. But, um, you just you just saw like this thing. It was just something about it. And like Jahadi said, though, you had to learn to play with MJ. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, most people would go up and they pass that ball. Well, MJ said, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this shot. And if you didn't take, if he passed it to you and you missed it, oh, he'd have something to say. <laughs> but you Jahadi, had to have what? tough skin. Uh, that that yeah, I mean, it's amazing, you know, because I know it amazed all of us when he came back. You know, him, you know, catching someone's layup off the backboard with two hands yeah. down, getting it out. Jahi, what what were you surprised about with him, and you know, and what were your expectations, and what was the reality when he came back? I was surprised about well, like Chris said, first thing I was surprised about was how quickly he got in shape. Because you got to remember when NJ first came here. You know, he was a different, uh, had a different body type. 
<laughs> you know, and um, just so it seemed like it was so quick how fast he not only got in shape, but I never seen him out of shape as far as when it became time to physically run up and down the court. He was right there with us, you know, and that was amazing. Another thing that was surprising to me was how much he stayed after practice and he just worked and he was really working on his mid range game. I saw a lot, you know, he was getting his mid range touch back and that really, really helped us out that year because a lot of his game was mid range game. You know, it wasn't a lot of threes that year and it let me know how important a mid range game was. Now, and you mentioned practice, not only his attention to detail of practice, but and I don't remember which year he played this was, but I remember waiting on the bus as we were in some city, and he had, I think it was a shooting game going with Teron Lou, or I'm, I'm trying to remember who he had a game going with. But if, if Jordan didn't win in regulation that game, that game was going to go to seven overtimes and, and, and you know, double or nothing. Just, just remember if you guys could, uh, you know, how competitive he was at everything, every aspect of practice and even after practice. He, he was competitive at, at everything. You can create a game, just make up a game. <laughs> just so, and he would, he would definitely join that game, and he would stay there till he wins it. And yeah, it, it, it's been a lot of practices and a lot of shoot around that ran way over because of Jordan just being competitive and, and staying out there, to, and, and he'll play until he wins. You know, and you know, that let me know his competitive edge, even on the plane when he played hey, what, cards. Yeah, he what he cards, what he he got real. What he would do with uh, myself, Hubert Davis, and T. Lou, <clears throat> we be uh, the warm ups. The bigs would be on one end, and you know the guards would be on one end, and he he'd be like, right, five dollars a shot. And we'd be like, come on, man, I don't want to <laughs> just shooting five dollars a shot. Come on, come on, five dollars a shot. Oh, jeez. I think he still owe me $15, by the way. <laughs> I think I think I know what he's going to tell me. As long as I owe you, you'll never be broke. But he would always want to up the ante on everything. Hey, um, at, oh, Atlanta practice facility, Atlanta. Uh, we were shooting half court shots. So he and I was against Papa and Christian Lakeman. And I was like, man, Em, you can't shoot this. You ain't going to make it. And Lord have mercy, this man just went out there and was like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and he, he just kept raising the stakes, $100, $100, $200. And I was like, Mike, I, I'm not doing that. Not, not, not. Mm. He said, don't worry about it. Come on, I got it. Let's go. And he was knocking them down from, he just wanted always to up the end. He needed something. Just to get his juices flowing, I guess, and and practice. Oh, you know, if, if it was a back to back or something like that, we had to like, you know, he cut it back, which is understandable. But uh, <clears throat> most practices, oh, he he's going in there. He's he's coming at you, All right? Especially when it's time to go up and down. That's what he looks for. Oh, the oh yeah, when it's going, we, 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 going up and down. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Plays and all that, you know, he might sit on, you know, talk to Doug and hey, go here, go there. Yeah. It's time to go up and down. He was ready. He wanted to. Oh, oh, hey, hey, you remember him always saying we used to do two ball dribbling, all right, in, in the warming up. I don't play, I don't play with two balls. I play with <laughs> one ball on the court. I'm not doing that. Right. <laughs> but and that's the only thing I ever seen him say that. He said, man, I'm not doing that, man. But when it's time to go like this. Oh, Lord, you see some fire in his eyes. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering now that you guys are older, um, you know, you were younger than he was at the time, obviously. And now that you're older, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if even now it's more amazing, you, you know, you sit there and go, wait a second, man, I, I don't know if I could have done that at 40 or 38 or, uh, you know, I mean, is it is it even more when you think about when, his time with the Wizards, he's saying these because now you're old. Back then, you're in awe and you're, you're you're trying to you're a sponge. You're trying to soak up. It's Jordan. Now, you know, you guys are sitting back going, "Well, wait a second, man. Like, you know, if I told you two guys, hey, man, you guys got to put on a uniform and go play with the Wizards, you know, it, it's a whole different ball game." Right. I'd roll. I'd roll over and die right now. <laughs> right. right. No, I, I think with the last dance, it really became surreal. 
yeah. you didn't, you know, like you said, you were younger and you just said no. Nah. You know, but and, and you are in all, but you know, once you start playing with him, he's just like any other regular teammate, you know. He loves one thing about it, he loves being around the team and being in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, you yes. always saw a different MJ in the locker room, on the bus, on the practice court, than you saw as soon as he walk out. He like, oh, so you you really get to say, oh man, he at home. And he's yeah. really at home in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's his that's his sanctuary. That's his home yeah. place. But um, and those you know, and those are stories we can't tell you right now. We can't tell those stories. <laughs> <laughs> but the last dance really made me realize how privileged and you know just how you know just how grateful I was to be able to play with him. How fortunate, you know, because you don't think about it then, but you you see all the things that he's saying in there and then you go back in the times you played with him and be like i remember he 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 was in that point and he was in that same mind frame at this point you can everything he does you can put equated to something that you had an experience with him during the, the wizard seasons the two wizard seasons guys listen we could go on forever uh, we just so much appreciate the time and is is Jody just use the word uh, grateful, and when we stop, it does give us a chance to appreciate. So grateful to spend time with Chris Whitney and Jahidi White again, because as we were going through it, as we were calling games, we were catching buses and planes, and it was fast. But do know we enjoyed so much your, your time with the Wizards and, and what you guys contributed to our franchise, and, and cannot thank you enough for the time. And it's both uh, great to see you both looking so well and, and doing so well. Hey, Jahidi, are you playing that piano back of you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I stand at it, then I push a button. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful piano. Oh, thanks, thanks. I, I, it's, the boys, the boys really try to play it, and they, they they're go. becoming well at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys always make beautiful music on the court too. Right? Chris Great Whitney, seeing you guys. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. Great to see them. Uh, for the whole right. entire gang, we thank you for finding us on this edition of Full Court Press. As always, you can follow us on the Washington Wizards Podcast Network.